All right, guys, welcome back to UK Beef TV. Will Edwards here with the Best of Brit Bodybuilding Show. Today we have on Mr. Warren Booty, who is a former professional rugby player, um, who's now a super heavyweight uh, competitive bodybuilder in the UK. Welcome yep. to the show, mate. Welcome. <laughs> How are you doing today? All right? Yeah, all good stuff. Yeah, not bad, not bad. I want to get into bodybuilding, but I want to first kind of touch on the professional rugby aspect of it um, and how yeah. that kind of got you into bodybuilding. So kind of yeah. let's start there. Give me a little bit of your rugby history. Uh, so obviously when I was younger, I started playing rugby. Um, when I was in secondary school, um, went from that, excelled up, went into Essex, played South East, uh, South East Counties, then went from that, um, got scouted over here, I was scattered into some teams over here, like Saracens and the Ladder Trials, etc. Okay. Um, but then I got picked up by, well, I was actually getting watched by Northampton. Um, but Northampton were linked with Natal Sharks. Okay. So with that, they were actually watching a couple of my mates. <laughs> Okay, okay. On, they wasn't even to come over to watch me. So they were scouting somebody else. They were scouting my other friends, and um, yeah, with that, by watching that, they come to the end of the game, and they was like, "How do you feel about coming to South Africa?" Okay, and I didn't even know this was an option at the time. Like, I was there thinking, "He's watching." I was just there to tell my mate just to get into Northampton. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, they asked if, we're, if I'd be interested in going over to South Africa, um, and I was at that time I was seventeen the first time. Okay. Um, I was like. Yeah, what I've got to lose. Went over to South Africa, went over there, played over there. I was playing for Natal Sharks, uh, playing for Harlequins over there at that time. Um, done a year over there on a contract, come back here. Um, then I was playing over here for South End, um, so over there contracted as well. And then from there, just went literally stepping up, stepping up, stepping up. Slowly. Yeah. And um, went back to South Africa. Got picked back up by him again, over in Crusaders, and then back into Sharks again. Okay. okay. Um, and then went over there. I done the um, Super Sport adverts over there for the uh, so, which Sky Sports is over here. Oh, Super Sport over that's there. That's so pretty big over there. Yeah. Yeah. So I was doing the adverts over there, uh, playing rugby over there, and uh, yeah, it's quite quite different to the old bodybuilding lifestyle I'd say yeah um, that, that's what I want to touch on <laughs> is uh, I, I'm, I want to kind of compare the whole rugby side of things to the bodybuilding side of things yep. so as you're going through all this you just explained um, the diet and the training I, I kind of want to compare both when it comes to rugby and bodybuilding yeah so yeah. the whole time you're, you're doing this rugby thing what's the training like I mean are you doing high reps and uh, and low weight or are you just doing powerlifting type stuff like what what's well um in rugby at the start, they gave us a, gave us a program um, yeah. that we were meant to follow. Um, they gave us, uh, obviously we had training outside on the pitch four times a week, also playing as well once a week. Yeah. Um, so the training was all very uh, sort of plyometric training, everything was moving, okay. no static lifting, um, no such weight lifting. Really at really. all? Really. A little bit, yeah. You'd get a shoulder press, uh, you'd get some squats in there. Okay, okay. But realistically, when are you going to stand and sit, lay on the floor and stop yeah, pressing true, your teammates? True, true. <laughs> you know, I'm not yeah, really ever yeah, going to yeah, be doing exactly. This. That's not so, what you're doing out on the pitch. No. So the, the reason I'm bringing this up is I want to know how that transition actually happens and how that works and how you go from training like that and falling in love with a bodybuilding style of training, which obviously we know is a lot more in the weight room than well, you just explained. As I said, uh, they gave us a program to train with, yeah. but uh, after about. I think after about four months, they realised I wasn't actually in the gym. <laughs> so I wasn't actually doing any of the training they was giving me. Okay. I was just, uh, well, realistically, I got told off as well because I turned up to training drunk as well quite a few times when I was out there. Okay. I thought, well, in the week. Typical rugby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was typical rugby, so it was a lot of drinking, a lot of going out, and... Um, Obviously, being English, so we had to sort of push it to the, oh, push it to the, the limit. Extreme, of course, yeah, they thought they could drink English more, standard, so yeah. we had to show them we could drink more. Okay, okay. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so with that, then they got me in the gym eventually when they realised I wasn't actually doing anything they told me. I was just okay. sort of coasting off of, uh, I suppose, coasting off genetics a bit, I suppose. Okay. <laughs> a genetics and aggression was getting me through it. All right. It was good. So let's kind of switch to diet then. So typical uh, rugby player diet, what's that going to look like? Um... I don't know about anyone else, but uh, mine consisted of probably uh, 
four takeaways a day, um, a lot of chocolate four. sweets. Oh no, 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 it was without the meals that the rugby team were preparing for us. Okay. We was getting fed there as well, so twice a day we was getting fed there. Okay, okay. <laughs> Not too bad of a deal. Well, well I mean, my takeaways, I was having such like uh, McDonald's, um, probably McDonald's again, um, and then maybe sushi if we wanted to clean it up a bit. <laughs> um, then we feel healthy, that, that's the healthy meals getting in. Of course. And of then we'd yeah. go from there to like probably um, a pizza or something. <laughs> okay, so tie it together for me. How how does it go from rugby to bodybuilding? Explain that one. Quite, it's quite a rocky, rocky ride. I'm still on the way. Okay, okay. So we're <laughs> still working that out. We're, yeah. still, we're still about to hit day one of diet, so we've, we've hit five <laughs> meals. Now. Okay, okay. But it was quite funny. Funny, actually, I did a check-in last week with Matt, um, sent him pictures. Um, uh, coached by Matt Jensen, yeah? Yeah, Matt Jensen. So i um, done a check-in with Matt and um, sent him the pictures. He was like, yeah, you're looking really good, really good results, like, let's keep going. And I said, right, yeah, good. There's no need to change the diet because I've just started the diet what you sent me four weeks ago. And um, until then, I'd been sticking to a sort of a roundabout the diet. But yeah, and now, now I'm fully on the diet. Okay, so Matt, <laughs> so if you're listening, if you're out there, he's on the diet now. Yeah? That is it. Okay. So it, it takes a little while to build into it, it's hard, but... Obviously, the thing is, when you're doing bodybuilding and rugby, rugby, you're getting paid to um, you're getting paid to hurt people pretty much. Yeah. Like, whereas in bodybuilding, you have to look good as well while doing it. Course, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you have to look good while you're breaking hearts. So that's the idea yeah. of bodybuilding. <laughs> <laughs> so love it, love it. with that, you do have to focus on the food, and you have to realise I can't always out train the diet, but. Nine times out of ten, I have been been able to train out train the diet, and Matt does go mad about this as well. Yeah. My last prep, my last preps um, last year, um, yeah, it was going really really well for about six or seven weeks. <laughs> let's slow down a little bit. Let's <laughs> let's go uh, talking about preps and that. When did you do your first bodybuilding competition? Um, my first bodybuilding. So I've been bodybuilding now for five years. Um, because I've, when I was playing rugby, I lost my rugby contract because I dislocated my hip twice. Uh, first time they said, you're never going to be able to walk again. You're never going to be able to run again. You're never going to be able to run rugby, rug, rugby. You're never going to be able to weightlift. So yeah, pretty much I was like, you can't do anything. And yeah. you're going to have to look after yourself because you have took the whole cup joint off because as your hip sits in like this. Yeah. So normally you dislocate your hip, it roll out or roll in, etc. Mine went through, took all of the cup joint off on the outside, and that was gone. And so, yeah. and it got in my head eventually because my trainer, Glenn, um, at the time, because of, when I stopped playing rugby, I went all the way down to 11 stone. Okay, uh, and from you were how, how heavy when you were playing rugby? Uh, seven and a half. So, okay, so that's quite the drop. Yeah. So yeah, I went, lost all of that weight. I was like a stick and got back in the gym and I wasn't confident. I didn't want to, be seen in there yeah and so what i was doing i was booking in really really early personal training sessions with uh, okay. a guy in the gym that i didn't know anyone in didn't know anything about yeah so we started from there and i think within i went from 11 stone to 14 half stone within um <laughs> 14 half stone within um three months okay so um, i just want to touch on that to our viewers out there um, even a big guy like this can have confidence issues. Obviously, he oh, said yeah. he lost a lot of weight. He went through his journey and this and that. But everybody can go through their own confidence issues, yeah? Yeah, and 100%. I really want to just kind of portray that to the viewers. That look at this guy now. Yeah, he's massive. <laughs> and he's probably really confident. Um, but he went through a time when he wasn't, yeah? And he was seeking advice and, and looking at hiring personal trainers. And just like the rest of us, yeah, uh, we go through that same kind of stuff. So it's I nice to be able to relate to somebody that's yeah, competing super heavyweights now on kind of a high level uh, British stage. Now, I want to get into the competitive history. So your first show was with what, Fed? Uh, so the first show I ever done was with UK BFF. Okay. It was the um, World Power Show, funnily enough. Okay. I think it was the only one that ever was put on, but it was the World Power Show at that time. And <laughs> what category did you compete in? Um, so I actually went there and I competed as a muscle model. Muscle model, you, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my first ever competition was a uh, muscle model. And how'd that go? Well, it actually done really well. I, I, was, in the um, I was in the top five. Um, I got beaten by... 
uh, Nelson Lopez and Tom Coleman. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah obviously yeah, they're yeah. both two world champions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So first show, get to stand next to two world champions. And um, yeah, so the judge came up to me at the end and was like, look, I'm going to level with you. Got one of the best physiques on stage, so you'll do really well. But you're too ugly for muscle model, so do bodybuilding. <laughs> It. Did you like like what was going on backstage? I mean, how was the experience for you like overall? Just well, the first competition. Bodybuilding, I put so much into this one as well. I actually put everything into this show, so much into the show that I didn't even put anything into posing. So I got up on stage and I was like, right, what do I do? Shit. Okay, I don't know what I'm doing. So you had the physique you had to showcase it, yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, okay. didn't know any poses. Didn't know anything. Just stood there like a plank. <laughs> Right. <laughs> so you did muscle model that was the UK BFF yeah and yeah. that takes us to competing at a t uh, two bros level yeah because that's where <laughs> your next show was with two bros wasn't it MPC, um, well bros. no the next show actually was because of they said this to me and there was a show um, two weeks after Zach Khan classic oh yeah yeah okay yeah, so um, UK BFF one, yeah. so I decided um, all right and I'll do that one because it, it was last year of the UK BFF when they were affiliated with yeah. uh, the IFBB okay um, so I, I went and done the Zach Khan classic um, with that top place in that one as well Went straight to the British finals from there okay and um, Did then you after that at the British finals for that year yeah, I think I pretty much just made numbers up. Okay. But, um, but you did show <laughs> up. I went there. Okay. <laughs> um, so I went to the finals that year. And then from then, uh, next year, obviously, it swapped over to two bros. Yeah. Uh, they took over the uh, IFBB. Okay. Um, and then I went into there. Um, now, to what category, though? Because you seem a lot bigger uh, than a muscle um, model now. <laughs> that was, funnily enough, it was up to 90 kilos I was. Up to 90, and, uh, yeah. Yeah, when I so my third time on stage up to 90 kilos okay. and that was what just was that classic bodybuilding no nah, like, like, like heavyweight body yeah body like heavyweight bodybuilder okay. um done that one um come fourth in that show yeah how was that uh, experience all right was it like a big line well, was it a big show like it was the ben weeder it was the okay. ben weeder it was like the second show they done i think okay. ben weeder okay. um yeah, they had to get me out of the toilets because I was puking up and I was like, yeah, I was really sick. Really? <laughs> yeah. So was I had a great nerves? time. Was that nerves? Was that diet? What was, what was that? Oh, no. That? I think I'd eaten something very dodgy. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> and it weren't, it weren't agreeing with me. Right. And uh, they were literally shouting out my number. And eventually, so I stuck my head out the door. I was like, well, yeah, I'm okay. coming. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> on stage and yeah, that's how that went. Wow. So yeah, as I said, a lot of things happen when I do shows. It'll always go wrong. <laughs> okay. but, wow. So from there, leading up till now, you've done probably quite a few more shows in between. Then I'm guessing. Yeah, I've done. Uh, I've done a fair few shows between uh, then and now. Um, probably can't count on my hand. I, I seem to when I do a show. Oh, that was when I done that one. I literally done that one and didn't compete after that until the next year. Okay. And then the next year I done, I think I done five in a row. And were you getting coached during that off season year, or were you just kind of doing? Oh, I was just doing it all myself, okay. uh, working it out for myself because of obviously doing the personal training and okay. the online coaching and stuff like that. I thought. At the end of the day, the only way you're best gonna learn is by experimenting on yourself yeah, and then out learning, your own body learning and my own like body. That. Then yeah, gives you a way to learn everyone else's. So. With that, I was by myself, um, and from them shows, yeah, I coached myself all the way through them shows, and okay. then until the only coaches I've had is I'm trying to think. I had Chris Jones help me on a show um, in Spain in Alicante, okay. but that was like two years ago. Uh -huh. um, he helped me that one, and then after that, then I was with Jansen. So, so what led you to hire Matt then? Um, it is the knowledge, the knowledge, the experience, um, and the with Matt, the thing is, is he's around the same age as me. Okay. A little, he's a little bit older, but he's around the same age, so he's very eager. He's wanting to learn. He's the knowledge he has at this age. He's only he's only learning more and more yeah, and more and course, pushing it more and more. So he's only going to get better over time as I get better as well. So and how long have you been working with him for now, Matt? Um, a year now. A year. Yeah, so a year. he's learning your body a little bit now. Yeah, he's yeah. learned my body. He, like like I said, with the whole diet situation, with this, yeah. So before the British finals, I had uh, quite a few meltdowns where I just would eat everything okay. in sight. Like I was eating. climb back out of that hole, then yeah. Yeah, and it got to the point that Matt was like, look, 
we're going to get you on stage. You're going to be ready on stage no matter what. And um, it was almost like self-sabotage and uh, where I was like suffering with a bit of like depression and things like this at the time as well because yeah. I had a lot of things going on around the set at that time. Um, yeah, and Matt was helping me all the way through it. It was like being a rock there for me as well. He was sort of talking me out of these sort of stages, getting me yeah, back to yeah. step, step one before I'd take myself back around the circle again. That's um, great. I, I just want to let our viewers know that, I mean, when you look at big guys like this in the gym, everybody <laughs> thinks these are the most confident guys around, but this guy's just told you he's been through depression <laughs> himself. He, didn't, he needed a coach to kind of help pull him out of that place mm. that he was in. So everybody deals with this stuff guys the big guys the little guys everybody yeah so just kind of keep that in mind that when you're in the gym and you're seeing other big guys all over the place they're going through shit too yeah <laughs> um i want to kind of get away from the competitions and stuff like that. i want to talk a little bit about diet and training mm -hmm. now when it comes to the diet are you crazy are you tracking stuff on my fitness pal and tracking calories and macros and all that or are you just kind of following your meal plan that you got like how's that working um now I'm <laughs> now I'm following the meal plan exactly as it is written out. Exactly, I don't I don't follow them. I don't need to track it on a fitness power or anything like that because yeah. I know what the mac macronutrients are. I've got it all written down on the boards at yeah, home. Sure. Um, got my on day, off day written down. Okay, and then literally just follow that from. Let's touch on that real quick. The mm -hmm. on the training day and the non-training days is it just a little bit less carbs or calories. Um, a yeah, bit it's just uh, it's just on the non-training day because of I'm obviously in off season at the moment. I'm pushing the carbs up. I'm pushing the weight up a lot. Okay, uh, so the meals are very large. So in carbs your, in every meal. Yeah, carbs. I've car carbs, very high carbs, very high fats in every meal because okay, the way yeah. my body works. Okay. Gotcha. Um, without the high fats in there, I won't grow. Without the high carbs and just the high fats, I won't grow. Okay. I have to have that both of them at the same time. So that's the yeah. recipe for you. Yeah. Yeah, that's my recipe. Like, that's not going to work for everyone. Exactly. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's a good point to make. That yeah, you can't be slamming in you know no. all three macronutrients with every meal. That's not going to work. For no, everybody. that's it. It's like I have literally. So my protein, my protein source. Well, I'm I'm very minimal on protein. I have. Yeah, it's probably. I'd say on my diet, it's fifteen percent. 15% to 20%. Really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And that is all my protein is on mine when the ratio is compared to, say, having like 40% of forty percent of carbs and probably 40% yeah. of um, of uh, fats. Yeah, that's. So. I mean, there's, there's benefits to that as well too. I mean, you know, less wear and tear on the kidneys and stuff like that too. Mm. So the, the health benefits of that are quite good. I mean, and you need the carbs to grow. And like yeah. you said, the fats are going to, uh, that's the calories. That's where the calories are coming from. So do you know roughly how many calories you're on per day? Um, at the moment, I'm on 5,650. And how yeah. much do you weigh right now? Uh, I'm 126.2. So that's just a ballpark figure um, for a guy, his weight, how many calories he's eaten. So that doesn't mean run out and go start eating 5,500 calories unless you're <laughs> his body weight. Some people kind of watch these videos and they kind of just, you know, oh, let me try that. It's not going to work for you. If you're his weight, yeah. If not, work it out and reduce the calories <laughs> and figure out what works for you, yeah? Um, let's touch on training a little bit. Do you follow any type of training? Training split, push, pull, legs, single body groups. I mean, how does that work for you? Um, I don't. Well, do pretty much more single body groups. Uh, so I'll be doing like, I'll have a strict like, like so back and hamstrings. Then I have a strict quad day, and I have chest day. Yeah. Then I have um, a shoulder. I'll have rest after that. Then I'll have shoulders and uh, biceps, and then I'll have um, hamstrings. Okay, and are you, do, well. are you tracking steps or any cardio in the off season at all? Uh, I do, well, I'm meant to do 20 minutes a day of cardio. <laughs> um, Again, but I, 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 <laughs> Yeah, dropping myself right in it. Um, I walk around the gym a lot. So that's that's good enough. Yeah, go, go. <laughs> do a few laps of the gym. <laughs> but um, no, I don't, don't track my steps. Um, I do... When I get closer to the competition, it's of course, strict. Yeah, like, of course, that's going to take up another level. Yeah, there. even to the point where, like I was saying, when I don't do my diet and I end up going melt meltdown mode, knowing I'm doing wrong, so then I'm like, right, I need to make up for this. So I end up doing like three three hours of cardio. That's that guilt cardio, that's, guys. We've all done it before. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. When you eat that extra thing and you think, oh no, right, that's an extra ten minutes, and then you keep eating, and you've got an extra three hours and it just gets like that doesn't it at the end of the day yeah. um so where is your home gym where are you training out of um at the moment i'm in rip gym in basildon um amazing Essex. gym amazing gym by the way massive yeah. gym isn't it it's very big very yeah. big is uh the bodybuilders gym of, uh, of essex yeah i don't really know any other proper bodybuilding gyms in in essex as okay. such like that size anyway uh, yeah. <laughs> but 
Yeah, that's yeah, that's, that's it. Obviously, you're, there's. Are you PT in there? Are you coat? What are you doing there? Are you? Are you said you are PT in. Is it? Yeah, yeah I'm. A um, personal train out of there, and uh, but I do personal training, sort of freelance side okay. of it. I've ripped. I can go monster as well. Monster, and, you know, yeah, that's gym. another great gym. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, freelance more. But I do more online coaching now. Okay. So it's okay. like because in Essex, we like like I said, that's why there isn't a massive overhaul of bodybuilding gyms because of there isn't a lot of bodybuilders okay. in, in Essex. So online coaching. His info will be in the description below if you want to get a hold. If you like his story, you like the whole rugby aspect and. You know, you like the guy and you want to give him a chance uh, to be your coach, you know, hit him That's up. Um, his information will be, or PT if you're in the Essex area, I guess, too. You That's can contact it. him. I'll understand if you don't follow your diet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's talk a little bit about, you know, like future competitions. Uh, you said you're off season right now. So when is the kind of rough plan for your next show? Um, next, The next show now is going to be the start of next year, probably around March, April time. Okay. Um, that's what me and Matt are looking at now uh, because of we was aiming for the Arnolds this year. Um, but because of, uh, well, I had quite bad injuries at the start of the year. I tore my groin, abs, my hip flexor, um, pretty much everything around here. And um, yeah, so I took, but how it happened was actually quite, well, I wouldn't say it's funny, but at the same time you can laugh at it because it was funny. So it didn't happen in the gym. What happened was I was cooking steak. All right, Be careful when you're cooking your steak. Yeah. <laughs> As I said, five and a half thousand calories of steak. Now, <laughs> so <laughs> I was cooking steak in the kitchen, and as I as I uh, was cooking, I collapsed. <laughs> I collapsed on the floor. I felt a little pop in my stomach. Fell on the floor. I was on the floor for hours. I had torn all the abs on the internal side, and but I hadn't actually torn the uh, connection of the abs or the connection, connective tissue, I'd torn through the muscle of the ab, so directly through the middle of the ab. Wow. Um, they said it looked like I'd been stabbed. <laughs> so they said, I don't know how that it, it happened. And how long did it take to recover from that? Uh, that I couldn't, well, I was bedridden for three, four weeks. I couldn't actually get out of bed properly. Wow. Um, I couldn't walk, couldn't do anything. I had... Um, so what I've done, I bought office chairs for every single room of the house. Wow. I'd like wheelie around so you can on roll them. Around, yeah. <laughs> yeah, or slide around on my bum, oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> like a kid. Um, but yeah, it took quite a while. It was about six, seven weeks until that was sort of able for me to get up, w walking around, and start light training. Um, obviously, working with Matt. Matt slowed down everything, uh, all my training. To it was all supported stuff at that time when I needed to do it, and. With the injury, what happened as well, when it tore, it tore into the bloodstream as well. So I got a lot of dodgy results into my bloods um, from the internal bleeding and stuff. Um, so when they checked my bloods, obviously the muscle damage, um, CK level, was, it was in, I can't think of what it was, now. I think it was like 8,000 wow. or something like this. Crazy. It was like, um, it was like past rhabdo, I think. I think they didn't even check me for rhabdo at that point. I was like, no, there's no point. Yeah. <laughs> wow. But um, yeah, because of that, it messed up all my blood. So this is another thing you need to be, this is another thing like bodybuilders and things need to be so on top of, is testing their blood, getting their bloods done and everything like that. Because a, a small injury, just a small injury can actually change how your bloods are going to come out and how everything's going to look. And it can do internal damage to your organs from an external injury. So this is what people don't understand. Yeah, take, like, take advice from the big guys, man. Get your bloods done. It's hmm. important. Any Anybody that's, you know... Serious about training, I think you should probably get some blood work done, you know, every yeah, few months. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. You've got to be always on top of that. At the end of the day, if your internals not got working, like, what, what good's the shell of the car if the engine's yeah. not working? Do you know what I mean? So did that affect your training moving forward at all, or were you able to get right back to um, how you? Were doing it was, uh, it was very mindful at first. Obviously, with uh, obviously chest supported, a lot of supported stuff for not not putting no pressure for the abs. Yeah. Um, had to then lower all of the protein down to this is how we actually found out about my diet okay so before i was on 280 grams so say say like average meal would have 280 grams of chicken in yeah now yeah. i'm on 140. okay that's yeah a bit more reasonable yeah, yeah. so now i'm on 140 to like and i stay on that that sort of weight now and by doing that I actually 
started to gain more size over yeah, time. So your where, body was working better. Yeah, because problem. my body wasn't so congested up with trying to get rid of the proteins okay, and everything like this, okay, and okay. Uh, causing more inflammation in the kidneys and everything. Okay. So with taking the pressure off the kidneys and everything with the bloods that we got, we realised that that's why I'm getting such inflammation results as well with the CK as well at the same time because of how much waste products coming from the protein. Okay. So, yeah. Wow. So, while wow. All sorts, man. Uh, that's quite a bit of history. Um, <laughs> you know, all the way from the rugby, bodybuilding, injuries, this, that, and all the other. Sounds like you all sorts of stories to tell. I know we're going to be catching up with you again in the future yeah. um, doing, you know, some posing stuff, some training videos. Uh, so, UK Beef will be catching up with Warren again. Um, so, look out out for some content coming up in the future it's been great to sit down and chat with you man lovely to meet you um, and yeah and we'll be catching up with you soon uh, make sure to like comment subscribe share um, again leave loads of comments anybody you want us to interview any questions for Warren his information is going to be in the description he said you know he's doing PT and online coaching hit him up guys get a hold of him and uh, yeah we'll catch up with you soon Will Edwards with UK Beef TV uh, this is best of the Brit bodybuilding show and we'll see you next time